Hello everyone, this is Gail, and I don't know about you, but I am ready for some cooler weather. So I got to looking around outside the other day at some of the things that were blooming and, um, you know, just, just looking in, at the flowers. So many of them are beginning to fade, and I saw some gorgeous sunflowers. So I thought I would do some sunflower, uh, a sunflower cane. So what I've done, I've got some bur uh, burnt umber clay and I've rolled it into a log. I have some cadmium yellow, which I rolled into a log. And I have to confess, this cadmium yellow was a little bit uh, crumbly when I first started. And I thought, well, let me see how old this is. The date on the package was 1998. So this is over 20 years old. But it worked out fine. You know, it just took a little longer to condition it. This is Sunshine, which is a little bit lighter than the uh, Cad Yellow. These, are, uh, these two are run at the uh, thickest setting of my pasta machine. I have some white that is on my on the third thickest setting and I have some gold which is also on the third thickest setting but I'm going to take some of this and make it even thinner but this is number three so let me go down to a number five and I think that might be good so this is number five, this is on the number three. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little log of burnt umber. This is the darker brown in the Sculpey family. And we're going to make the center for the, um, for the sunflower. Excuse me for bring, grabbing that ribbon. And I'm going to lay this on some gold. Now this is not 18 karat gold or anything like this. This is plain old Sculpey Primo gold. And I'm just going to trim it to size. Now this is the clay that's rolled to the number three setting. And I'm just going to roll it. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. My camera needs to be adjusted. Sorry about that. But I've just laid it on here. I'm going to roll it. And then roll back. And you can see that there's a little mark there, which isn't very straight. But I'm going to cut on that mark. And that should, well actually I should have cut on the inside of that mark. That's what I didn't do. You cut on the inside of it. I cut on the outside by mistake. And you can see it's just going to almost meet perfectly. Because you only want a single layer. You don't want it to overlap. And let me move these out of the way. So I have some room to work. And I'm going to roll this. And after I get it all nice and sealed up, which it is now, you can see you don't see the um, seam anymore. I'm going to start reducing it. get rid of my clay. I've got clay everywhere, but I love having room for it now. My old craft room, I didn't have room for anything. Here I can just lay things around. I really love it. And I'm going to, even though this is down to like a quarter of an inch, I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to go out even more because I want to make this skinny. And it feels like I've got air down there, so let me just get rid of that air. And 
and just, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you do want it to be rather thin. Actually, I think that's thin enough. I don't want to go too thin. I want to be able to handle it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut two inch slices. However many this will make. And then I may end up reducing the other half also. We'll just see how this turns out. And they can be all different sizes. Like I said, they, you don't have to have it perfect. Then I want to push them all up together. And I may need a few more. Let me just move this out of the way and I'll reduce the other one. But this is going to be the center for our cane. Again, I had some air on the ends because my clay wasn't perfectly straight when I rolled it. Alright, so let's cut this in two inch sections. And lay it up against it. I don't know about you, I love sunflowers. And we have a part of our yard that's going to be very difficult to grow things in because it's kind of like a hill and you can't get the lawnmower down there. So there we go. So I've got all of my little rods laid up next to each other. Just make sure they're stuck to each other. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll it like a jelly roll. Just roll it on itself and you may have to use your blade to help it turn. Because it does have a tendency to stick to the glass work surface. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. But you can kind of straighten them as you put them together. And squeeze from the center out to squeeze out any air that might be trapped on the inside. Here lately, I don't know if it's because I've been working too fast or what, but it just seems like I've been struggling with air. But there is the center for our cane. Now what I would personally like to make this a little bit smaller and in doing all that pressing I pretty much got rid of all the little ridges so you can make this any diameter you want. But I'm going to make my petals now so I'll know how small to make my center. So what I'm going to do uh, I wish I had some rectangular cutters. I don't. I think I've got every shape in the world except rectangle. Because so I'd like to keep them all the same size, but I will just have to make do. So I'm going to take my two yellows and my white. So you can see I got dirt on my white. That's okay, you're not going to see that. So I think what I'll do is cut let's see I 
that's an inch, let me do an inch and a half. Yeah, let's do an inch and a half. And then this one would be an inch and a half. And this would be an inch and a half. And then I'll trim off the ends so that they're the same size. lay them over here. And I'm going to take my yellow, the sunshine, and I think I'm going to just lay this on here. I don't know if it's going to be wide enough. I can shorten these though. I have a cat hair on my clay. Any of you that have pets know what that's like. I'm going to cut these an inch and a half. Let's see, inch and a half, inch and a half. This one I'm going to cut this way. Inch and a half. Oops, I didn't mean to put that with my cad yellow. I'm going to put that there. Then I'm going to take my, let me go ahead and, well, I'll just trim them all at one time. So here's my darker yellow and my lighter yellow. I'm doing this because I've been doing a lot of paper crafting lately. And one of the things that I have been working on with my paper crafting is doing gradients, which is sort of like our Skinner blend. And I'm really enjoying figuring out how to um, how to work with gradients with alcohol markers and different things. So I thought I would try it with clay. So here's an inch and a half, inch and a half an inch and a half. And I'm going to also take my gold No, I think I'm going to wait and just wrap it in the gold. No, I'm going to use my gold. I'm going to run... Oh, there it is. I was looking. I said I had more gold than that. I've got this thin gold because I really don't need a lot of gold, but I'm going to use it for separation. So I'm going to lay, let me just at least start with a straight edge, might help a little bit. I'm going to lay a yellow on here and I'm not going to go get this raggedy edge. Now this um, shading, I guess is what you would call it, the shading that I'm going to be doing, I'm not sure it's going to work, but at least I'll know after I do this. So I've got the light yellow on the gold, and then I think I'm going to put that on a white. Let me try to keep one end straight. Let me trim these up as I go because I don't want a lot of overlapping here. Not overlapping, but I don't want... There, that's all about the same size. And I'm going to put a gold on the other side of this bright, of the darker yellow. So 
So let me show you what we've got. We've got gold and then the dark, the cad yellow and then gold and white. And then I'm going to put another sheet of gold on the other side of the white. And this is more for definition. I want to be able to see the different streaks of color in here. Then I'm going to put the bright yellow on here. And these are bigger. So I apologize if you get my hair. And another thin gold. I think I went the wrong direction. Because I wanted the, well, I can still do that. So I've got gold on both sides, and I want to put the light yellow, because that was what the last color was. I'm going to try this. I don't know how it's going to work. This is an experiment for me today. But I figured if I was going to take the time to experiment, I would turn the camera on. Because I don't get to do this very often. I'm taking physical therapy, and that's taking up two days a week. And I didn't have time to begin with. I've just got so much going on. Maybe I'll do a, a uh, chat video to tell you all that's going on with me. And then I'll just, I'll go ahead and use what I've already got cut. I'll use, and I'm lining this up on one side so I can trim off the other side. Because this one is just a little bit wider. So I've only, this is exactly what I wanted to do. I just kind of got to it by the back door. I wanted the white in the middle. And then the gradient colors of the yellow going out. So I've got let me just trim one side. Alright, see that? I've got gold, dark yellow, gold, light yellow, white, gold, light yellow, gold, dark yellow, gold. Now what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to take this and stretch it out a little bit. Let me roll it with my roller. One day I'll learn to look at my roller before I roll it, make sure there's no stray clay on it. Just want to make it a little bit longer. And I'm going to cut this in half. This is two and a half inches, so that means one and a quarter. Now, I'm going to put these two together with the dark yellow in the middle. Then I'm going to do this again. I'm going to press it down. Press it on all four sides. And start reducing it this way. Make it longer. Now you can do this as many times as you want. I, if I were doing this myself, I would probably go one more 
time with cutting it in half. But for the sake of time, I want to show you what it looks like with just one cutting it in half. Do the same thing. Roll it with your roller. Roll it on the ends because you want your sides to stay square. I am. I'm going to do it one more time. Let me get it back to two and a half inches, which is... Whoops, I'm tearing it. Let me use my roller. Okay, let me find an inch mark. With these dark lines on here, sometimes it's hard to find a good inch mark. So there's one, two, and a half. So I'm going to cut this again at one and a quarter. And again, see what we're see how we're doing? We're getting thinner. But I'm going to be happy with this one. So what I'm going to do here, rather than reduce it, I'm going to start pinching the ends. And do it gradually. Don't try to print, pinch it all at one time because you don't want to force it. This is going to be our petal. But again, it's too big this way. So I'm going to push it in. I'll have to probably do my corners again and pull it out. I'm going to use my roller because we want to make it long that way because that makes it shorter this way. Besides, we want enough petals to go around our center. Probably should have made this a lot bigger. Go back and pinch my edges again. You don't want to lose where your top and bottoms are. This one does have a little registration mark here on the side, so I know I've got that side, and I guess I do here too. You just know that that's where they come together. And just keep pressing and pinching and pulling and Pressing and pinching and pulling. Because you really need about six pieces of the petal to make a cane. Or I can make three and then cut it in half and put together. Which may be what I end up doing, because if I'm if I do six, it's going to be so short. Let's see if I cut the ends off. That's going to give me four inches. Let me come out a little bit more because I want to make some even. I see some air right there. Now it's gone. And you can see I'm pushing because I want to make the center fatter than the edges. And 
and I'm going to do that on both sides. And I'm going to cut off these wonky ends, but I will show you there's our there's our puddle. I just like what that gold does and with the different shades of the white and the yellow. I don't know if you can really see it or not on camera, but it's really nice. And let's see what size we've got left. We have got four inches. If I make three, I don't want to go to six inches. Three and an inch and a half would be four and a half. Is that right? So I need to go out about another half an inch. Which is right there. Let me trim that. And I'll trim inch and a half. And inch and a half. And you can reshape these as you cut them. It's easier sometimes to reshape when they're in shorter pieces. Make them more of a petal shape. And then we've got our center. So we want to look. Sometimes the sunflowers have a pretty large center. So I think what I'm going to do is pull out my little, and I don't know where they are. I've got little, I've got the rods from Tiny Pandora, and I thought they were in this drawer, but they're not that I can lay my eyes on anyway. So they must be in another drawer where I have some of her stuff. So I'm just going to use a knitting needle. I think that's the prettiest end, so I want that on the outside. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to make a little indentation here. I only want this to go halfway around. So this is going to have to go smaller. Actually, I'm just going to cut a piece off so I don't have to make all of it small. And take my knitting needle. I think I'll use this end. But if you have a little small rod or something like that, let me cut this off so I can sit it up. Anything that's round. And let's see, I think this is the pretty side, so I'll put this on this side. Some of them you really don't have a pretty side and an ugly side. You just have to pick one. Now this is really only about a third of a cane because I could probably put six, I could probably put 12 around here, but I don't have 12. I'll just make a smaller, a shorter cane. I'll cut these in half. Sorry about that, I should have measured my clay better. I 
I'll just have a short cane. I'm going to try to get all these on one side, which it, I don't know if I can do that or not. But I'm going to try. Actually, I think I'll just put these in here. Now, of course, if you're making a sunflower, you're going to want more petals than this. So I apologize that I didn't make enough for my petals. And what I should do is put this on a piece of patty paper because I need to turn it and I can't turn it when it's stuck to my glass. Now you need to decide, now you could also, and like I said, if I had more cane, I would. I would also cut, like this is six, I would cut six more and stick them in here in the center. I'll tell you what, why don't I just go ahead and make another quick cane and I'll be back when I get that done. Okay, I am back. And... As I've, you probably know, you never make, you can make the same cane the same way. It's going to turn out a little bit different, but I kind of like the way these turned out. They turned out a, actually this is too short, too long. But you, I would then push these in here and maybe shorten this a little bit. And let me trim a little off this. And I'm not going to throw these away because I can use these to just make a sunflower. But I'm going to push these in here. They don't have to be the same length as the other petals. I just try to... make it look like they're the same flower. Let's see, I've got that one and this one. Well, i got these two. So let me put this one in here. And just shove it in there as much as you can so that you can not, you know, close up that space that's in there so you don't get air. And let's keep going all the way around. And I probably should have used, could have used a larger center, but that's okay. This sunflower is just going to have smaller centers. They're all different kinds of sunflowers. And I've got one more for in there. Look on the back side, make sure that these are all squished in good so that you don't have any space in there. So there we go, there's our sunflower. Now the seek, you know, you do what you want to do as far as your filler. Um, personally, I would prefer, and I've used up all of my translucent that I had here on my table. I would take 
well, let me get some out. I need to get it anyway. I always keep translucent on my table. I'm going to use my big block. But let me let me condition this. I won't let, make you listen to it. Let me condition it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, I've tran I've conditioned some translucent. Uh, this is probably a little more than a full package of the two ounce packages, but I stacked it because I'm going to be needing some big chunks. So let me just cut a piece that's about as deep as as the uh, cane is. Make a point and stick it in somewhere. Well, it's too tall. Just take some playing around. I'm going to put it in there and cut it off at the end of the two petals and just shove it in there. Again, you're trying to take up space. And just keep doing this. Pull these apart a little bit and just shove that in. And that just beyond the petals and then shove it in. Because you need something to keep the space between your petals. Otherwise, you're going to end up with flattened petals and you're not going to be able to do much with it. So you just keep doing this all the way around. Okay, so I have that, but before I go any further, I want to turn it over and look at the other side, again, making sure that this fills in all these spaces. Now, you'll notice that there's some, still some open spaces here, and that's what I would take all these little um, pieces of translucent that you're cutting off or whatever that are left over. Make little snakes and put them in where there's a space. And the goal is to have it so that all you see on the outside is translucent. Actually, I'm going to flatten this out a little bit because it just needs to cover up that tip. And you're going to see some places that are like this where there's quite a bit of clay showing. Just go in and cut little triangles or press in just a little bit there because you want to make sure you get all of this covered. Look at it from both sides. Try not to pinch your tips of your um, petals. And you want to keep those as pointed as you can. 
Now here I'm going to put two little snakes in there. Now this is the tedious part, but it's probably the most important part. Because how you pack it determines on how easily it's going to be to reduce this to a usable size. And what you're trying to do is to put the translucent in all the way around your petals so that it holds their shape when you start pressing on it. Now this is a pretty strict, a pretty good V, so I'm going to make this into a triangle and shove it down in there. And another one over there. It needs to be as deep as the petal. And don't worry about excess clay on the outside because you can either trim it off or you could leave it on there if you want. Just about done filling in all the spaces. Again, pick it up and look on the bottom just to make sure that everything looks like it's covered up. Then what I would do, and like I said, this is the tedious part. I'd flatten this out a little bit. Like here, it goes, it's a divot that goes in. I would try to fill that in. And here's another place where there's a flat place. The goal now is to make it somewhat round. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly round. But you're going to be pressing on it from the ends. It's time to get it off the paper. Still put some more on here because that point doesn't look very well protected. This is called packing and I guess you can see why. You're just packing it full of clay. Now you don't have to use translucent but I like to use translucent because if you put white and then you end up putting it on a blue background, you're going to see the blue. I mean the white. So then you just, and the best thing to do at this point is also to let it rest. So 
so that it cools off a little bit because it's pretty warm right now. But the translucent is softer than the rest of it. So I'm going to let this sit for a while. I'm going to go let my dog out. There is still a place right there. And don't worry about putting too much packing clay on here because the more you've got, the safer your points are going to be. And actually what I should do, and I probably will now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to, let's see, I don't know how I'm going to do this with this clay. Normally I would take one long piece to go around it. I hear my driveway alarm, which means my daughter is home, so I will turn the sound off so she doesn't interrupt you as she comes in. Sorry about that. My daughter came in and started making all kinds of noise and I decided I needed to put this in the freezer anyway. So I just went ahead and turned the camera off. But anyway, so now we're going to have to start reducing and to do that you just start pressing in from all sides. And while you're doing, see how much different it is? Because this is not soft at all like it was. But you just need to pinch all the way around until it starts to, to move. Now this petal here looks a little wonky, but we'll see how it looks after it's reduced. You may not be able to notice it. But my daughter is now outside cutting grass, so if you hear a lawnmower, That's what it is. I'm going to try pushing on the sides this way and just work my way around. The object is to press it in and as you press in it should come up. And this is only about three quarters of an inch thick, so it's going to be a little difficult. So I'll give you a little bit of a heads up now. Be sure and make enough cane that you can make these taller. It's just everything I've done for the longest time, it doesn't take much clay. And this, <coughs> excuse me, took a lot more than I expected. And for those of you that might be interested, my clay is sweating. One of my, uh, not one, but my Sunday school class, we meet every Sunday by Zoom. And every two years we have a charity auction where various people donate things and we auction them off and then we use the proceeds. 100% of the proceeds goes to uh, families in crisis. 
whether it be through a local charity or through a uh, Samaritan's Purse. Sometimes we do a you know, Samaritan's Purse. Um, we had disaster relief. But if any of you are interested, let me know. Send, write a comment and I will get you the information. We are going to have a Zoom um, bidding. It's going to be a live auction, but it's also we're also going to be accepting bids by Zoom. But we have like, I forgot how many. It's like 38 tons of gravel. Uh, so many truckloads of mulch. Uh, we've got a kayak, we have fishing gear, we have auto um, maintenance, we have a set of tires, we have 28, I believe it is, trips, getaway trips, and each trip was, is to someplace really nice, and then it also includes the guy that's in charge of our auction always goes to the restaurants in that area and gets gift cards from them so that when you go on these trips you don't have to buy your meals. So just if you thought you'd be interested, it's on the 20 on the 19th of September. Start uh, the live the silent auction starts at 10:45. I mean not 10 12:45 Eastern Daylight Time. And I don't know what time the live auction starts. Probably about 1 o'clock. But it's it's a fun thing. The, two years ago when we had our auction, we raised $28,000. And we took that and divided it in half. So we had $14,000 each year to spend on helping people. And it was just awesome. But this is going to take forever to reduce because it is hard because I had it in the freezer. But it's softening up some and I don't want it to... I want to do this slowly because I don't want to mess it up too much. I said I've already got one leaf that's a little misshapen. I don't want to do it to many more of them. But you get the idea. So you would just keep continue to reduce... If you want, you can shave some of this extra translucent away. Sorry, here comes the lawnmower. But I'm going to go ahead and end the video so that I can get this done and uploaded before tomorrow morning when it should be released. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Just take this slow. Uh, the slower you do this, the better. You can see this is already now a little bit, almost like an inch thicker. But anyway, then you can take it and slice it. You can make earrings. You can, if you want to put a background color in there, it would work better for like earrings. You can make charms. You can trim this off to make it more round. There's all, you know, there's just little things that you can do where there's excess. Here she comes. Sorry about that. There. So she's gone past the window now. But just take your time, and that'll make it a little bit easier to reduce because it's not quite so big around. I can actually pick it up. So I hope you like this. Come back again soon for another polymer clay video. Have a great day. Keep on claying. Bye-bye.